All right, guys, welcome to the Game Speak episode five. I am your host, Snoop603. Uh, the other co hosts are Scanner Barkley, Epona, and we have a special guest tonight, Chalk One from Battlefield Podcast. Uh, Tony Why Not the Tiger could not join us tonight as he is doing finals at college pretty much all week, and he was not going to be around at all to do anything. So we have a guest tonight, and Chalk was gracious enough to fill in for Tony. Chuck, if you want to take a moment to give a little background on Battlefield Podcast for anyone in the chat that doesn't know who you are. Mute him. Mute him. Why would I do that? <laughs> I don't think you can. I don't think you can selectively mute me. No. Uh, bat- I don't know. Battlefield Podcast, most people in your chat might already know anyways. But we've done Battlefield Podcast since, what, 2007 or something like that? On and off. It, it can be difficult with BF4 at times. But... Um, yeah, we got a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Battlefield Podcast, and Twitter and all the things that people who watch your content are used to. And that's how we met through Battlefield 3, way back on the PS3. Ah, uh, the old console hero days. <laughs> and then we all upgraded. We saw Gaben, and we were like, praise be no. to him. And we moved up to the Master Race. <laughs> Some of us upgraded. You took, you took a sidestep. I took a sidestep? Oh, because I'm on yeah. AMD. Yeah. Sorry. AMD. Sorry. At least now, I got I, everybody on console was so inspired by Snoof. They're all wanting to upgrade to AMD now, I guess. I, I at least have an Intel CPU. You going to give me that? That's something. I know. And you know, the fact that I got it for free. That means nothing to me. I'm all about money. I know, but listen, you guys all helped me. I mean, everyone here played a part in helping me win this PC. So, Scanner, if anything, you're partial, partially to blame for me having the AMD video cards. Exactly, because I love striating my social groups to where I'm at the top. <laughs> That's how I roll. God damn it, I'm never going to win. Yeah, you're never <laughs> Just stop trying. <laughs> oh, God. Cat. Uh, fuck cats are dumb. Okay. So, without further ado, we'll jump into the first topic. Uh, we're going to bounce around a little bit because we don't have a whole lot of time tonight due to late start. Uh, and there was a shit ton of leftover topics. So, unfortunately, we can't get to them all. And more importantly, we actually had more new topics for this week. So, because of that, we're going to only pick up one leftover topic. And I'm watching as the document is all tweaked around because Epona is the queen of formatting. Yeah, you got rid of my favorite Sherlock questions. So I know. Well, I'm we didn't have time for peeved. it. I'm sorry. It's and fine. We're, we're burning time here with you arguing me. I'm just. <laughs> I regret nothing. All right. So, first up. Oh, you removed the name. You're lucky I remembered it. First question is from Lambusado. And I really, really hope I pronounced your name right, sir. Said, uh, if you were to pick a game to be the center of your channel that hasn't already featured on it, what would it be and why? Epona, since you had the first note on there, we're going to let you go first. Well, since I was fixing your garbage, I had to scroll back up. Okay. Uh, my channel, I guess, is mainly Battlefield 3. So I would choose uh, probably Daisy or Borderlands because um, I was more, I was less about like gameplay and what's going on in the game and more about people and also drunkenness and screaming. So Daisy makes it <laughs> just so much more possible for things to happen because there are other humans you can interact with in the game world and either murder them or befriend them, which I did both of. Uh, many a, a time. lot. Yeah, many a time. Have you consumed uh, anybody So I yet? think... What's that? No, I have not, unfortunately. they I haven't played since they added that to stable. But uh, yeah. So uh, Daisy would be my choice. There's endless I- possibilities. I gotta fill in for Nightbot because I don't have it. Because I saw Slats right exclamation point beer. Oh my gang, three philosophers. Ah, it won't zoom. It won't focus. Fuck off. There we go. Quadruple ale. Shit's delicious. It's backwards. Whatever. Nine point seven percent. I'm gonna drink this whole thing in about twenty minutes. Cause I'm a fatty. Uh, I'll go next because I want to. Uh, I interestingly enough, I have the same game to say. Daisy. Although Daisy has made it up on the channel, at least once, but I want to say twice. And I've actually been trying to get more Daisy up on the channel in the past couple weeks, but I've been met with some challenges. One, I fucking suck at Daisy. There's no two ways about it. I try, but I know when I suck, I fucking suck. I struggle to aim and kill people. So 
couple that with the fact that I've always been very hesitant to lose all my loot. And I've been way too worried with just looting up. Like, that was always my mentality. Get into DayZ, spend two to three hours looting up, and then hope for something to happen inside of five minutes. And if I die, oh well. Uh, and that was like at first. And then I got to the point where I was like, oh, dude, I'm fucking tired. Excuse me. Of losing all of my shit and looting up for hours to lose it in five minutes. So then I got way too leery of meeting with anyone because I'm like, oh, I don't want to lose my special gun and all my gear. So what I've been trying to do lately is <clears throat> I've really changed the way I approach it. I'm just hopping straight into full pop servers. I'm just kind of YOLOing it every single time and forcing engagements and interactions. And uh, the last time I did that, it actually went well. I made three friends. It's the first time in DayZ I came across more than one person and didn't get fucking shot on site. So that was pretty nice. But, uh, yeah, I want to get more DZ on the channel real soon. Uh-oh. We lost Scanner. And then look at this. The fucking <laughs> chats. The, the, just, everything's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> oh, no! Anyway, Chalk, take it from here while I try to fix whatever happened um, with Scanner. I, I don't... I thought about this before. daisy has been on my channel a couple times, but I... More on my, my Let's Play channel, because I have one that doesn't focus on battlefield at all so i have a kind of a kind of a difficult time answering this one because i want to pick a game that i've already featured on that channel a couple times um daisy is great but just in the interest of doing something different i think i would i could really get into elite dangerous i've done a lot of videos on euro truck simulator 2 which for whatever stupid reason is is incredibly fun and elite dangerous 2 no one whatever elite dangerous is uh is sort of like trucking in space with the added ability of shooting at pirates and 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 it's pretty open world so i i think i would do a, my channel around that um i i still i still need to get more into that game it, it releases officially in a couple days i think so elite uh, elite dangerous is that crazy ass sniping game right no, 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 no. This is a spaceship game. It's Sorry. like a flight sim. Scanner will be able to give you like a whole backstory on what that game is, but it's it's in space. You've heard of Star Citizen, probably. That's You're thinking of that, Sniper right? Elite. Sniper Elite, thank you. But yeah. Yes, I have it's heard of similar Star to that, except it's an actual product. Okay. So, and it's 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 it's, it's very enjoyable. I bought into it towards the end of its alpha because they did one of those um, really really expensive alphas to prevent people from you know to. I think Scanner alluded to that before that they really wanted only people who were serious about it to to buy into the alpha, so they the prices were way up there. Um, that's what I would do for myself. But if you if you're talking about Battlefield podcast, um, including Peekaboo, uh, her stuff would probably all be Counter Strike because that's what she came up in. So and I I did as well, but it's been a, it's been a lot longer since I really delved into Counter Strike. But so it'd probably be a combination of those two games. I haven't played CS:GO in like a year. I think it's been about a year because the last time I played it was with Fake Thriller. Which, by the way, Fake Thriller is at the emergency room at the doctor. I just found out he wasn't feeling good the past couple days. So everyone send out your thoughts and prayers to Fake Thriller. Send him all the good juju. <laughs> no, I, I I think he's like legit at the doctor or the uh, not the ER, but I, th I think he's gone to the hospital to like kind of get checked out. I, I just found out. I'm waiting for my wife to pass on more information. It just came to mind again. My mind is everywhere, dude. My, <laughs> my mind's fried. <sighs> uh, okay, sorry. Scanner. I'm derailing everything. Um, I don't know. I just do whatever games I want. Like already, fair. Like, Skater never... does play everything. Like I had, like, like I was pretty dedicated to BF3 for a while, and then that kind of cycled out of the period where I felt like I could add anything that wasn't simple repetition upon what everybody else was doing. So I just kind of like ventured off in other things, and since then I just do whatever the fuck I want. The way I tend to do it is whatever game I've been playing with whatever subject I want to talk about which could have nothing to do with the gameplay and it's a nice chill way to use to do your channel it would be cool to like if I could like truthfully if I could go back in time and this would mean like I probably wouldn't know any of you so you know how much I hate you all um, but like if I could go back in time I would dedicate my channel to like Dark Souls 
I'd just be like, right, I'm going to do a Dark Souls channel and I'm going to dedicate to Dark Souls. Because I did a, get the... the the community is amaze balls. Like the Dark Souls community is is pretty fucking legit, very friendly place. The the guys who all like make the content, there there's no like kind of bitching or moaning or anything like that between like, oh, I did this video and I did that video and you stole my thumbnail or you don't you don't see that kind of shit. And it's just like an endless mine of stuff that you can talk about because everybody's interpretation of the lore is as valid as anybody else's. So like Dark Souls would be cool. It'd be sweet to like go back and like do a Dark Souls channel, but then I'd probably end up branching off from Dark Souls and just doing a channel that did everything anyway. So I think you'd have a really hard time narrowing yourself down into one particular game or niche. Just the way yeah. that your your style of content is. Yeah, because sometimes like I allude to this in another question, but I'm not sure if we're even answering that today anymore. But like on my channel, on one day it could be like a super serious, let's talk about ethics here. Like let's have a real like who who was wrong in this scenario comes and then the next day I could be like running somebody over in a Jeep in fucking Battlefield. I don't see the point in trying to brand yourself as one thing or another basically. Better to be a Swiss Army knife. Squantoon did give me that copy of, copy of uh, Dark Souls, but I have not booted it up yet. So thank you, Squantoon. Ha! You know what? Yes, yes, Sir Dan, I am six foot three, so my height equals Snoo's waist, basically. Mm. <laughs> I was like, Skater's actually, I think, the tallest person here. Wait, yep. no. Chuck, how tall I did are not you? know that. I'm six four. Wait, you're six four? Stop! Stop. Stop. Oh, Fuck! I am podcast. the shortest person here. I've spent my entire life being like the tall guy in the room. I'm six two. Pretty I'm pretty even. sure We're that Jess has got me by half an inch. I'm mm, I'm it, six two with like my shoes on. No, like you're taller off. because we stood side by side when we were at PAX and you had no shoes on, and I'm Ooh. positive you were just a smidge taller than me. If not, then we're fucking dead even. We're going to have okay. to check and get it, Pax. I'll take it. Okay. I don't know how we're going to be able to stand so close to each other with that fat ass of yours. I was on a diet. I got my brother's wedding. I have to fit into a bridesmaid dress in oh, March. Lucky you. Maybe <laughs> if Snoob's asked to be a bridesmaid, he'll stick to one of his fucking diets. <laughs> I would have had to have started a diet to be able to stick to it. Tell you what, oh, when shit. I'm not feeling like I literally want to fucking punch myself out every day and run out of the building screaming my head off from anxiety I'll get on that diet until then I'm just going to keep drinking my fucking face off to deal with my shit <laughs> just Same remember here. every just remember every cheeseburger you eat is basically you punching yourself in the heart <laughs> so there is that Ugh. okay that beer is not good for chugging Whoa. oh that one's intense isn't it <laughs> yeah very flavorful, but very full. Like, very filling. Holy shit, that was not so right, bad. Right, huh. <laughs> God damn, Spike Monko is 6'5". Is he really? I don't believe it. Damn, him. Spike! I don't trust anyone on the internet. You a big motherfucker. <laughs> You're tall, bro. Alright, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, this one's from Lethal Clips. His question, will you be going into hardline with an open mind, or do you think BF4 brought it down with it? P.S. Snoo, will you be doing anything like 30 days to Battlefield again? Twas awesome. Uh, to clarify the question, I'm not specifically talking about your opinion on Hardline as a game, more of Battlefield 4 affected it. Does anyone want to jump off or do you want me to tackle this first? I could jump off just Go to get it. it out of the way. Like, I've been brutal on Battlefield 4, like completely unrelenting and unforgiving as to how shitty I feel that game actually is. And yet I'm still willing to, like, give Hardline a shot. You know, the beta was... was I and they've got another beta coming up and whatever but overall yeah there's like a big question mark for me on the game because they've said themselves that the BF4 engine and the hardline engine are basically the same thing that changes made on CTE will be transferable across both games and improvements can be expected in that manner and whatever so like yeah there's a big fucking question mark if anybody's smart there's a big kind of question mark as to how reliable the user experience is, is going to be. But that's still no reason to, to write off the game because there has to be some kind of 
build difference between the two whether they're just taking out features or whether it's just little kind of tweaks and upgrades that are happening kind of from visceral to the engine or whatever there's no point in shitting all over the game pre-release like just wait for the beta and play it and see what it's like if, believe me if the beta is shit i'm gonna go fucking ham <laughs> so that's fine i can i can i can nail about like a you know two thousand three thousand angry views if i talk shit about battlefield on any given video so why waste the opportunity <laughs> good point uh I'd be a fucking liar if I said that Battlefield 4 didn't affect my outlook on Hardline. And uh, if anything, Battlefield 4 has taught me to learn to temper expectations and excitement. Even, uh, I mean, to be fair, Battlefield 3 was good, not great. And there were some things about it that really kind of tempered my excitement for Battlefield 4. And I'm totally throwing Epona under the bus when I say this, but... Leading up to Battlefield 4, I was like, I had I had tempered expectations, everything was fine. And then the two of us watched <coughs> some fucking trailer for Battlefield 4, like, a couple days before it came out. And we were both like, yeah, this looks fucking awesome! And she's like, I'm pre-ordering right now. And I was like, a lemming following her right off that fucking cliff. I'm like, I'm pre-ordering too, bitch! <laughs> and I, I, I regret it now, in hindsight, but... <laughs> Uh, Peer pressure I, is a bitch. I let my excitement get the best of me Whatever, when dude. I shouldn't have. Uh, although, to be fair, did did we get it when it was on sale? Didn't we save a couple bucks? Wasn't that kind of the whole reason we pre-ordered like three days in advance? No, I think we got keys through Ranku and we bought premium. Yes. Before the game even came out. Okay. You got them With free the gold backpacks. <laughs> um, I, no matter what I see... Leading up to the beta for Hardline, whatever I see during the beta and whatever I see in between beta and actual launch, I'm not pre-ordering it unless there is a significant discount that makes it worth my worth the investment. Because I'm I'm planning on buying the game. As much as Battlefield 4 has really affected what I was thinking previously regarding Hardline, I'm still going to get it. I'm going to take a chance on it. But I'm going into it completely open-minded with absolutely zero expectations. If it's good enough that, you know, I can enjoy it, then cool. Um, I'm going to go through any and all content that shows up prior to release and just take it for what it is. You know, if I see stuff that looks good, I'll comment on that and I'll point it out and, you know, I'll discuss it in depth like I usually do about why I think that's a good thing. But I'm not going to let that rope me in like I have in past games. But at the same time, if I see any, any shit, I'm going to call that out. But like anything else, I'm just going to be what I've always been. I'm going to be honest about it. I'm going to call it out for what I see it as it is and but I'm going to give you a, explicit details as to why I think it's shit in whatever regards or aspect I find it so uh, really it's no my approach to Hardline is no different from Battlefield 4 in the sense of like I plan on getting it I plan on producing content on it if it's something worthwhile uh, but I am going definitely going in with a much more tempered uh, expectations this time yeah I'm interested in what Snoop is going to say about it when he gets it but BF4 has definitely put me off future Battlefield titles in terms of um, I used to love Battlefield and I would just eat it up no matter what. Uh, going back to like 2142 and such. So I am very wary regardless of what studio does it, if it's the same or not um, with Visceral and whatever. Uh, and I wasn't really impressed with Hardline when I tried the beta when it first came out or the alpha or whatever we're calling it now. Um so I had no plans on getting it unless Snoov is like, Oh my god, so awesome! Jills, Jills! And then maybe I'll <laughs> check it out. But um, it'll be nice to see uh, what I think of the beta, but other than that, no. I am not planning on getting that. I mean, BF4 has definitely affected it, what people think of it, and, and what people, sort of what their expectations are. That's That's clear, and I don't think that anybody would, you know, want to make an argument for how it hasn't done that but you have to try and you have to at least give it an, a, a shot and and try and judge the game for its own merits when it's out so that means for me no pre-ordering it and you know like scanner said playing the beta seeing what it's like and if it's something that you think you'll enjoy then go buy it that, that should be the standard for any game though that you buy i'm so tired of people hyping shit up and 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 pre-ordering left and right and buying everything whether there was bad releases before in the series or whether the previous game was great. We've seen great games be followed by absolute junk. So you got to try to clear your head and 
and just consider whatever new things coming up as its own. Yep. It's not it's not that difficult. Like there's no I don't know what this great rush is. Pre ordering used to be a thing to pre order so you would reserve your copy. Now that whatever most of the games are digital, it's not like you have to be first in line to get it. Now it's like a sign of loyalty almost, like that brand loyalty yeah. thing of like, have you pre ordered your game? Are you better than the people who haven't? Kind of shit. I want to be able to put sparkles on my gun, so maybe hey, look, you should check you yourself. <laughs> Judge. <laughs> you can get like you can get like zebra pink zebra camo i'm not messing i'm gonna be rocking that like the second line lock it like the way i'm looking at hardline is simple i played hardline with like different groups of people but i really fucking enjoyed hardline when i was playing it with um mustard and cane like the dumb shit it was just like yeah this is this is fun like doing doing stupid shit is hilarious within this game so if G2A do that little thing they tend to do where I can pick up the game for 30 bucks, I'll get it. And I'll just like play it with Mustard and Kane if, if the game is trash. And I can still get my get my value out of it because I'll be laughing while I'm playing it and that's all you actually want from a game. Just like re, you know, readjust sure. my, my aims a little bit. I like Battlefield for like PTFO. Really like let's let's play well. Let's, you know, get these objectives and win this game i love it but i might just need to drop that <laughs> like battlefield battlefield may just not be that game with hardline so or at least mind. not with randoms you know like doing it with a group of people that you know that you can play well together with it can be fun there's yeah. a lot of the exp you have to adjust sometimes to it i think a lot of people want these games to be everything for them and everything for everybody else and you know that's not realistic Scanner, to your point about how you want to Battlefield like to be your PTFO game, but if it sucks, you just kind of join the other guys and fuck around. Yeah. To your point earlier, um, when you tweeted at me saying so, something along the lines of hating Battlefield 4, and I responded saying I truthfully don't hate it anymore, it's because of that, what you had just said, where I, I changed my outlook and how I approach the game. I just fuck around. I mean, there's, there's the rare occasion when I'm playing, and uh, but for the most part, I play with Billy the Kid now, and then Slats actually joins in too, and then we get random people jumping in from here and there. And s sometimes, every <laughs> once in a great while, you get into a server where the stars align and fucking everyone PTFOs, and it's a good game. Like the server isn't running like shit. Hit detection's going exactly what you would expect, and both sides of the teams are fucking actually PTFOing, and it's like that is why I always wanted this game. But then reality comes back, kicks in the ass, hits detection, sucks. Nobody's fucking PTFOing, and that's when I just bust out the sniper rifle again and just run around having fun. And right. As long as you kind like, of change your. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say when that happens, you either change how you're playing it or you go play something else. Right. Like yeah. people who will play hours and hours and hours and just piss themselves off so much. I don't understand. I don't have the time for that. It's like there's enough out there. That if you're, you know, if you only get 150 hours out of Battlefield 4, so what? That's still probably more than you play on a lot of other games. Right. And Just don't torture yourself. Why? I agree with you. Yeah. Like, I, I never did, like, trolley content for BF3, I think. But for BF4, I did. And it was always, like, really well received. The Adventures because... of Tiny Airplane. I fucking miss that. Yeah. How many times I've referenced that when I'm, like, streaming or playing it? I <laughs> see one of like tiny airplane <laughs> because they're always uh like I would call the clips for that from gaming sessions where everybody was just in the mood to fuck around so it was this real like infectious good humor with what was happening but it just kind of stopped being rewarding even that stopped being rewarding after a while like when you're trying to do something and it's going to be amazing if you can pull it off and you know you really should have got it to happen but the game just fucked you yeah it's like i can't do it i need i need fairness whether i'm jerking off or ptfo and i need the game to be fair so that's what will decide hardline ultimately Oi. or i'll just start hacking yes. i don't know <laughs> whatever like who gives a shit? Hack my way to like quarter of a million subs and just watch them dice invites roll in. Yes. Thanks, guys. Uh, Jess, you are fucking on top of this shit. I try. I just I went to the document. I was going to strike it out for you, and it's already gone. 
Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay, I keep burping. I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. All right. Uh, next topic, because that, that one kind of turned into another Battlefield 4 thing, and it wasn't really supposed to be about that too much. I was thinking that as we were... It, it, it's, it it's is what it is. It wasn't <laughs> wank. It was like... You know. Battlefield is in our blood. It's like, it is. I'm not going to apologize for the fact that we you know, circle around to it, because it's an important fucking franchise to all of us. It is. Uh, all right. Suck my ass, chat. <laughs> <laughs> Next one up is from Vizaj, and I keep, every time I see his name, I think it's saying badge, but it is what it is. Vizaj, hey, I found that when I went to Scanner Barkley's channel, his most popular videos were not a good representation of the best <laughs> of his content. Uh, true? Trying to summarize a little bit. So my question is, if you could move the views from your top three videos to any other videos, what videos would it be and why? Scanner, I'm going to have you jump off again, because it just seems to be working with you being the uh, first person to... I'm the anchor. I'm the QB. Do it. Go long. Sports ball reference. Sports ball. Sports. <laughs> sporting so fucking sporting hard. <laughs> um, yeah, like, he's got a really valid point, and I'm actually really happy that he said it because I don't really care or think too much about, like, how to grow my channel or how to influence people to watch my stuff. But it really did kind of pop it into my head that, yeah, the, the higher... But it, basically, it's impossible to know what video is gonna land and what video is just gonna just do do what all your videos do. You know, just kind of keep the curve going, and then what video is just gonna explode. So for me, the one that was exploded was the one of fucking Tim falling asleep in the Teamspeak, <laughs> making those weird ass fucking noises, and me and Chris and Wes all laughing at him. But like. If I could move those views to somewhere else, would I? Absolutely, because I feel like other videos have more to say, or at least represent more what I'm about. So I take those like 700k video or views, and stick them all on my uh, tropes versus people in gaming video because that's been like one of my one of my best moments for logic and riding the cusp of something that's really contentious. And everybody has really strong opinions on it, and it's really easy to like lose the run of your comment section. But I fucking surfed that wave so well. I said my piece. I emphasized the importance of the message that I was talking about, but I also emphasized the importance of the way that I was looking at that message. And I just, I'm really like kind of proud of that moment because there's so much shit around the tropes versus women series and there's such like vehement kind of anger towards it that to be able to express disagreement with it at a base level but also acknowledge the importance of it existing in the first place and not have anybody lose their shit that felt really good i was like oh yeah you know this this was this was good sometimes the internet comes up good so that's where i'd put like all those views the rest of it i don't care about that same thing as before all my stuff is different and it's always going to be different so worrying about how i present myself if anything being a difficult channel to get into and to figure out actually helps me because the people who do it and sub actually wanted to and they try it a little harder and they're the kind of people that i'm after for subs so there you go you know i kind of had the <clears throat> same thought process going on we don't have any, like, one huge video like you do where we just got a ton of views. We have, I want to say a couple of do no, uh, about a dozen that are over 100,000 views. Maybe two dozen. But there's none that, like, really, hey, hey, shut up with your face. There's none that really stands out like crazy. Uh, but if I could take all those, <clears throat> I would move them to... One specific video and then two others that are a little bit more just kind of like this kind of video. One specific one would be that USAS 12 review that Fake Thriller and I did, the joke one. Uh, I'm very proud of that work, and it, it kind of shows a couple of things for us. You know, one, obviously the weapon reviews, but two, it also shows us our funnier sides. And that was something that we spent like, I don't know, about a week working on. And it was really well received. It blew up. Like, everyone fucking loves it. It's just... And we had fun doing it. it. It was right in line with our interests. It wasn't anything out of the blue. So to be able to kind of like further portray that as a good representation of the channel would be huge. Um, 
any one of my more uh, funnier videos where like just like random funny stuff even related to battlefield 4 specific i don't care something like that again where it just kind of conveys good vibes because if i'm not being serious i'm just trying to have fun and i'm trying to convey that in some of my videos so again i kind of i just kind of further represent what it is i'm trying to go for the channel and then any one of like my serious topics because uh, i feel like that those three really represent for the most part what the channel has always been about like we've been seriously informative stuff when you know the the topic striker fancy uh, to specific games or just general topics within the gaming industry but then there's also the funny stuff out there and the funny stuff kind of runs the gambit of like just spur of the moment funny stuff and some well thought out planned ahead of time kind of funny stuff so that's where i put all my stuff into but for the most part, almost all of our video views are in those freaking BF3 <laughs> weapon reviews. <laughs> I just get drunk <laughs> put it on YouTube, so <laughs> I guess the ones I would prefer to have more views are ones that I've actually put... Oh, not that I don't put effort into getting drunk and playing the games, but... Um... That sounded you just don't so remember sarcastic. that effort. Yeah. No, like, I actually... I will edit them. Like, I'll put a lot of time into it, but... Uh, ones that I like add stuff to like a, a few of my Daisy ones I really liked, um, but that's it's kind of an irrelevant question because I only upload to YouTube when the stars align into a constellation of Benedict Cumberbatch's face. So, <laughs> if Jess is honest, she'd turn the views on some of her bigger videos into liquor and get smashed all over again. <laughs> yes, actually, that's fantastic. They would lead to more There's, videos as well, so. I think the top views on our videos are on videos that are A, quite old, and B, have very little to do with the usual content. Um, they're certainly not podcast videos. There's, the they're things star, like, yeah. they're like, uh, I think I have an OBS tutorial on how to stream. That's up there somewhere. And then so much of it depends on just how um, the video gets out there. Like, I... I put up a video last week that's over 45,000 views now that I totally didn't expect it. And it's nothing like a podcast. It's like two minutes long. But it got posted on Prima Games somewhere. So it, it shows up a lot and, you know, it gets a lot of views. But if I had to move them, I think what we all want, when we put a lot of effort into a video, we'd like to see get a lot of views, even though that doesn't always turn out like that. Oops. So there's certainly videos that I've put more effort in or that are more representative of what the podcast is where we talk about the game itself or even Real Steel which had a lot of effort go into it um, but it just you don't get to pick where the views end up it just kinda happens and you just you have to live with that why is there a giant head on the yeah, screen? What are you I fucked up. I tried to put a picture of Benny over Jess's face because she's always oh. talking about him, and I fucked up. <laughs> you don't know how to resize anything. Of, no, I, I forgot to resize it before I set the face. scene. I was like, damn it. Jessica Biel. <laughs> oh, don't mention Jessica Biel. Did you see what Peekaboo linked to me today? Oh, no. I, I have to get it for you, Scanner. <laughs> you can't. I'm curious. If I look at another, if I look at even a picture of another woman, Tino is, comes downstairs and punches me in the <laughs> back of the fucking Good. head. Good, T. So, <clears throat> she's psychic. <laughs> Jess, get to your formatting. The hell. Oh, oh wait, sorry, I highlighted it. You saw me going for it, right? Yeah, I did. All right, we we'll skipped that topic. I can hear her moving upstairs. <laughs> is that a fat joke against your fucking fiance? I can hear fiance? her coming downstairs. I'm telling her. She's watching. She's gonna, she's gonna come down and just fucking sock you right in the cheek. Yeah. <laughs> I hope we get to see this. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? All right. Uh, moving on to the next topic. I want to make sure. So we're trying to skip some topics and save them for when we're all really attentive, looking at Epona, because she's the only one that's fucking Guys, up here. Look, I am here. I can't look at it because I'm queer, but it is way past my bedtime. <laughs> Put it in the chat so other people can see it. You got mod status. Come on. Oh. You can't just it, share it. I was just sending it to us. Scanner. Sorry. Look at this. Now I want to look. Before we move on to the next topic, I got to see. Oh. You, I already sent it to you. I told you I can't look at anything in the Skype chat because it's going to fuck up the stream. No, I mean, well, when we were at work, I sent it to you. Oh. Ah, oh, Jessica Beale makes my pants so tight. 
tighter than normal because I'm fat. There, I saved you all the fucking fat children. <laughs> Fuckers. I love it. <laughs> See, like Skater said last week, it's the key to not getting made fun of is to beat everyone to the punch and just be real self-deprecating. <laughs> see, see, the best thing is that over time, I just train people to think of themselves the way I think of them, so I don't even have to bother insulting them. They just do it for me. Uh, you're a fuck. <laughs> I am. All right. Uh, oh, shit. Okay, so <laughs> skip that one. Jess, can you move the one we're supposed to skip because it's really fucking huge, and I'm worried that we're going to... Uh... Just scroll past okay. it. Well, that's fine. I, she's she's going to move around. And I can move oh, on to the next one. Fuck. So, oh boy. Uh. Oh, okay. No upper lobe man. <laughs> is nostalgia? <laughs> we're, we're gonna paraphrase this because it's kind of wordy, but uh, the gist of it is he asks: Is nostalgia poisoning the well? How much blame lies with the company for failing to deliver, and how much blame lies with the nostalgia and jadedness? Uh, chalk. We're gonna change up pace. Would you like to jump off on this? Or would you like Scanner to jump off? No, I can do it, sure. Go for it. Yay. Um, I, I think there's actually a pretty good portion of that happening, that nostalgia is, is, you know, affecting people's expectations at the very least. And then even when they play the the titles, that they have these ideas of what it should be or what it should make them feel like but because, you know, the previous game did that or the one that was developed by the same company two years ago was. And... It goes back to what I was saying earlier, that I think you have to start everything with a clean slate, even if it's a sequel or something. Uh, I don't know. I, I've i taken a fairly cynical approach lately with not necessarily game companies, but also just the general uproar and expectations and complaining after launches and stuff like that from people. And there's, there's a definite part, I think, of responsibility that falls on the gamers, or falls on us. Um, when we buy these things and then spend so much time complaining about it afterwards when we really didn't take the time ahead of time to make sure we we're making the right decision here purchasing that um, I find that more than any other product that people don't do a lot of research and don't wait and are just first in line. I mean how many people go out and buy a brand new experimental car on its first production run and just drive off and then shit breaks and they're like well that was probably a bad idea because I might die. So, too yeah. Many, too many people so, don't understand how not to shop for cars. No. <laughs> Say it backwards. You know what I mean. Go for it. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I think there's definitely a part of that where you have these these ideas that this is what the game is going to be um, ahead of time. Nostalgia is a very powerful thing when it comes to games. I think when we look back on some of the, our favorite games, and you guys have talked about it before, um, your favorite series, I think, in the last podcast, and if you go back and seriously reconsider and think about some of these things, they probably all had some issues as well. So I don't think there's ever been anything that, that perfect. Over time, you just you sort of keep remembering the good things um, because you remember the good times you've had. That's the whole concept to me of nostalgia. So. Right. You actually yeah. said almost the exact same thing I had written down for notes. Um, just to kind of expand upon it. Nostalgia is good in some aspects. I think for a developer's standpoint, it's really good. Because pending their nostalgia is reflective of the majority of the you know, uh, fan base of whatever game it is that they're working on. is kind of all on the same line. It could lead to a better overall product. Because you're driven by the good memories of a good game you played as a kid or a young adult, whatever. Whatever that nostalgia is coming from, you're driven by good feelings. That's where I think nostalgia can be good. But to answer the question specific, specifically, I do think nostalgia poisons the well. And that uh, the blame lies almost completely on the gamers. The big thing I can say about it is you really have to let go of the past to be able to enjoy the future. And unfortunately, a lot of people let nostalgia get in the way of enjoying things for what they are. Uh, something could be very good, but if all you're ever going to do is compare it to the original, um, whatever it was that is driving your nostalgia... You're probably going to have a bad time. Not many things can live up to whatever nostalgia it is that you have in your head. It's just, there's a reason why they call it nostalgia, man. And, and there's a reason why certain things really stick out in your mind and kind of drive your excitement for other things that are related to that in the future. 
but you got to let that go if you want to be able to enjoy whatever it is people are making for new stuff enjoy it for what it is and I, i'm not saying that is like uh, i'm talking down to people because i wholeheartedly admit i have fallen to that same trap myself so it's definitely not me like pointing the finger at people and blaming them it's definitely me owning up to my own mistakes with trying to enjoy things and, and unfortunately looking back to the past and saying oh man that was so much better and then look at this pile of shit they tried to give us that's supposed to be you know kind of like a continuation of it i couldn't let go of the past to enjoy what i had here in the future and i i think moving forward i've cured that within myself i should be able to enjoy things for what they are like I said, nostalgia is important in some aspects, but as the consumer, you have to temper it, or you're just not going to be able to enjoy things for what they are. Actually, what? I have a, only a tiny thing to say about this, and it's because oh. <laughs> Scanner always has excellent things to say. Uh, Why don't you just stroke his beard a little harder? <laughs> I'm verbose. <laughs> <laughs> I was choking his beard. Choking. Uh, I think <laughs> it's important to make the distinction uh, between being nostalgic and, you know, people are saying, oh, it's not like the good old days, and being nostalgic uh, when there's a legitimately subpar version of the game released compared to its predecessors. Like, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. No. Good point. Yeah, I agree. Otherwise, maybe not a the... maybe not a good example, but you know. What I'm saying. Well, would that be okay? Well, here's a food for thought to expand on it for after, because I want Scanner to get into it. I don't like I don't want to try and jump off too much of going into another topic before everyone else gets to say their say. But after Scanner's done regarding nostalgia, how would you define nostalgia? Like going from Battlefield Three to Battlefield Four, you're talking a two year dev cycle. Right. From Maybe Battlefield. one game to the immediate next one. When I think of nostalgia, I think of something like Mega Man from back in the day when it first came out to if they were going to remake it tomorrow. Like, that that's where nostalgia would play in for me. So that's food for thought, but Scanner, bring your point up and then we'll come back to this because I think that's going to be a good topic to bring up. Yeah, I've already... See, this is where I know I'm ahead of the game because I already talk about this in my notes. So either you're reading my notes and you're no, pretending you're not... I, I did like, read it. I oh, swear I'm to God. Pretend I'm on Scanner's level. No, it, it, Scanner, occasionally a blind squirrel finds a nut. And occasionally, fat old Snoove can come up with some good shit on his own. I so was just about to say, thought. occasionally a fucking fat old Snoove realizes, shit, I already ate that fucking nut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... I like in in the notes that I wrote up. I distinctly kind of mentioned how one thing that like really did make me laugh was people's interpretation of what nostalgia actually means or, or what it is. Like when we were into BF4 and the can't remember the name of it DLC came out where it had the maps from BF3. In the run up to that, I was seeing people like who should be smart because they can turn on a fucking computer talking on Twitter about how they were feeling such nostalgia for BF3. Under no fucking circumstances in Scanner's world are you allowed like use nostalgia to describe a feeling about playing a game that you were actually just playing half right, a fucking That's a bad early. example. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not being particularly harsh on Jess. Particularly. Oh, I didn't think you were calling me out. I'm just... I'm Damn it! Um... No, but like that's Please, the thing. People, people, people kind of misinterpret nostalgia. T, I'm just kidding. Kind of what it is and what it means. It's a, it's a general warm, fuzzy feeling in association with something that you used to do a while ago, not like recently or you know last week. Like I'm not nostalgic for the last episode of The Walking Fucking Dead. Um, that's not really the way it works. We also have in. In the social media age, it's it, forced nostalgia is a real thing. Like it's an actual f entity now, which is weird because before, you almost always would feel nostalgic for yourself. Like you'd be walking down the street, or you'd be chatting to a buddy, or you'd be, you know, rifling through your old computer games, and you'd see something, and you get this sense of nostalgia. Whereas now, I can wake up and I check my feed, and everybody remembers everything all the fucking time. 
and everything was always so great. Remember when life was amazing and fucking, I don't know, unicorns fucking shat cereal or something. I don't know what kind of history people are remembering. <laughs> but it's this forced nostalgia. It's like everything was better before now, which is bullshit. Like, I am here to tell you it's dog shit. We are at one of the best points in history for gaming. Hands down, fucking bar none, we are at one of the best points in gaming. Because whatever issues people want to bring up with AAA titles, there's still hundreds of like indie and AA titles being produced that shit all over AAA titles from 10 years ago. Like, dump all over them. That's just how it is. Gaming has never been as awesome as it is right now. So take your nostalgia and twist it sideways and sit on it. It's like true, bro. Control I feel like you have to be a, maybe a generation removed, like yeah. at least, at least. Like what we've got right now is amazing in games. Like games have never looked so good. They've never been so complex. They've never been so fucking interesting and emotive and all the rest of it. And like. We've got digital distribution. We've got patches. I remember when you bought a game, the game was broke. Fuck you. I remember just after that period of time, you bought a game, the game was broke. If you wanted a patch, you sent away for a disc to patch your fucking game. Like, gaming right now is awesome. I have no time for this nostalgia. Were games back in the day amazing? Yeah, of course they were. Like, being a kid in a game was, was great. But it was trash. If 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 I was a thirty fucking four year old man experiencing gaming as I experienced it as a child, I would fucking freak out, burn my fucking PC, throw the burning PC out the window, and hope to fuck I hit Dean Rocket Hall in the face with it. <laughs> that is what would happen. When I was a kid, I was stupid. I was too fucking dumb to realize that loading games off a tape was a stupid way to fucking do it and waiting half an hour for the son of a bitch to get on a computer was ridiculous. Like, I was an idiot. But my idiocy gave me patience. Well, there wasn't much other way to do it back then. Yeah, patience, which I don't have right now. And gaming has spent billions of dollars, so I don't have to. It's amazing. All these game companies are basically my slave... They're working to make my life better. It's awesome. Nostalgia the distribution is model alone, like you said, has just the the convenience of it, the internet speeds, all that. Like I know people like to complain about like a four gigabyte patch, but imagine a four gigabyte patch ten years ago. It's, yeah. it's not. It just doesn't. Sorry, you know, come back three years from now for a new game. Things are better now. Deal with it. If you want to experience in gaming how I experienced it when I grew up, there's like all kinds of really horrible places in the world. Go live there for a week. Your tech really, level will be basically the same. I really was hoping Snoof would be back because I wanted to suggest taking this topic in the direction of Half-Life 2 versus Half-Life 3. And if part of the reason that we haven't seen a Half-Life 3 and maybe never will is because I don't know if it could ever stand up to that true nostalgia because that game's been it's been a while and I think the expectations for that game are so great that I don't know if even if it was an awesome game if it could ever meet that for some people Snoop's a peasant so he wouldn't even understand that he wouldn't anyway. even know so let's What's go ahead uh, Penguin I don't think my outlook on games has changed if I pick an, I, I can pick an individual title from any year over the last 30 years that I can either praise or I can destroy because of all of its flaws. But when I'm looking at gaming as a, as a totality, as like an entity with a history and a community, it's better now. Like it's impossible to say it's not. So yeah. That's fair. You know? I concede my point slightly, but not all the way well because when i was when i was talking about it, i was thinking about you know deus ex and then uh the sequel to deus ex which was invisible war and if you go back and play deus ex now like it whole graphic wise it does not hold up 
but um, like it's not it's not as good as you remember. It's not as bad uh, as it could be, but um, that's what I was. That was my example I was thinking about. But now that you're you're bringing this up with you know gaming has come so far and we're doing so well and you really think about it, it's like <laughs> was it really that good of a game? What are they saying? Oh my god. <laughs> What? What's the problem, guys? Nothing. <laughs> I love talking about poop. Let's do it. Uh, can anyone fucking hear me when I tried getting up to walk away? I, I try not to hear you. No, I was yeah. I was almost screaming. I couldn't stand up. Was thankfully, it the thought of all the poo? Yeah. No, uh, thankfully Chrissy came downstairs to uh she actually had to help. With a shovel. <laughs> 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 I got out of my chair and I almost fell down. I couldn't stand up. I could barely even get out of half a crouch. She had to physically like grab me by the torso and stand me up straight. I couldn't get past a certain point because my back is hurting so bad. That's scary, bro. It, dude, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do because going to the chiropractor is not a great option at 50 bucks a pop since my insurance doesn't cover it. But I digress. It's not important. It has nothing Have to you ever played Half-Life, Snooth? <laughs> I told you. I told you. To say no. I'm just going to slink out. Yeah, let me know when you're done with this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not played Half Life. I no, I'm I'm ashamed. <laughs> I I just finally <laughs> played Portal Two with you, Jess. What? Shit, that was like six months ago now. Oh. And we played it for like ten minutes, and that's I enjoyed the shit of it. As, I would actually that's love not to go. As classic. As... No, I know, but that's that's kind of the point I'm trying to make for how, how little I've played for other games. Roscoe made a good point about Duke Nukem Forever. I mean, that was a shit show, but oh. um, I've, it's been so long since Half-Life 2. I don't know if Half-Life 3 could ever live up to it unless it went in an entirely different direction. And we were like, what the fuck? And then well, it, then you're going to have people complaining that this isn't Half-Life. Well, yeah, before. exactly. Yeah. That, yeah I don't think it ever really could. Half -Life. They shouldn't yeah. call it Half-Life. They should call it something else. Yeah. And I don't, think that's, I don't think they're ever going to make one because of that reason. Can a Half-Life 3 exist that delivers? Absolutely. Like, amazing games are released all the time, and Valve have a strong habit of releasing very strong, you know, titles that affect people. So I've no doubt but that they can put it together and they can do it. But there's always going to be a percentage of the player base who is disappointed with what they get because of that same thing, the nostalgia hype kind of blender that they throw their brain into instead of just letting things be the things like i've been guilty of it in the past i've built up game like prime example of a game that i recently allowed myself to overhype and was subsequently disappointed by was dark souls 2 that's entirely my fault you know people people do it it's 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 just the way we are as gamers we get stupid fucking excited about all kinds of interesting things but ultimately, we disappoint ourselves, not the games. It's like, like we lie to ourselves about how amazing they're going to be and how the devs completely understand us, man. And my vision of what Half-Life 3 should be is the purest, most awesome vision of Half-Life 3 in the world because I'm the only person on the planet who really understands Valve and Gaben and Half-Life 2. And if I ever met Gaben, like, accidentally on a bus or maybe a subway, we'd be best friends, man. It's the Half-Life 3 releases, and then you're disappointed because the, it's not a fantasy fucking world. It's just a game. That's where it's dangerous for the developer, too. The, like Nostalgia can fuel some of the direction and some of the passion and play on that a bit, but they have to be really careful to try mm -hmm. not to cater only towards those people because whether or not... I, I see the topic is now about whether or not Snoop's played Half-Life, but... <laughs> um, there's a lot of people who legitimately probably haven't played it because it has been so long, right? And you don't want to make a game that only people who played the original game 10 years ago are going to enjoy. You want to make a game that everybody can enjoy. Right. Exactly. It's just good. Like, it's good business sense and it's good art to not, like, overly limit your audience, especially if you can bring something to the market that's interesting and maybe challenging for those players as well. Of course you want to get as many people involved with what you're trying to do as you can. But, I mean, who fucking knows? There might never be a Half-Life 3. That's why I like Valve. They're never really in much of a rush when it comes to this kind of stuff. They normally need somebody else to start it 
for them, to be honest. And then they're like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Let's let's budget for this with our billions. I follow. Who's beeping? Sorry, that was me. Uh, I'm trying to multitask here. Getting just trying to get set up for the next topic because we were an hour in and I'm trying to see what we have time for here. Uh did Star Wars else, trader. Did anyone else No 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 we're gonna ax that. We're gonna get to another one. <laughs> what? <laughs> yep. I'm answering that. Fine, go for it. Hang on. Let me, go ahead. I'll, I'll update the topic. Uh, hang on. Jess, did you move it down already? Fuck it. I don't remember who asked it, but the gist of it was, and it was a carry. It was a question related to last week's episode. Uh, Scanner, why did you hate the Star Wars trailer so much? Scanner, take it away. Because it was shit. Now let's move on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Made a few words. I, know. I like I'm it. only messing. It was bad. It was it was clickbait. It was made for the internet. It was rushed. It was a trailer that was built around trying to give people like what they felt they wanted. Like, ooh, look, a shot of a of a of a of a TIE fighter. Oh, look, here's the Millennium Falcon. Oh, look, a droid, because we're all fucking nerds, right? So we all love droids. Like, it couldn't have been more fucking pandering if it tried. That's why it was a bad trailer. Star Wars, the original Star Wars, and that's where they're going back to, is good cinema. It's actually like, you can make an argument for it as good cinema, not just, you know, interesting films. And now they're just doing this kind of stupid shit. So that's why it's bad. It's bad because it doesn't deserve the name. I think nostalgia is poisoning the well. <sighs> nostalgia is poisoning the well. So I'm going to poison that fucking well. So meta. <laughs> I'm set fire to the well. Uh, Way to bring I, it back around in a circle, Snoop. That was well done. Yeah, like that? All right. Yeah. No, you know what? I I liked the trailer. So fuck you, Scanner. I, I don't care why you liked your opinion's garbage. I know no one cares for Snoob's opinion. It's not that like everyone's entitled to their opinion. You just managed to be wrong. Like even when you're expressing your opinion, you manage to do it in such a way that I find so fucking contentious with the logic that's behind your opinion <laughs> that my my personal rule of everybody's opinion is somehow correct for them. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna change my wrong to my me, and you should dude. be wrong to yourself. But that's just like your opinion, man. That's why your back hurts. <laughs> my back hurts from carrying the weight of this podcast all the fucking time. That's a lie. You carry this. <laughs> you, your your body knows you're wrong. Basically, that's what it's doing. It's like I oh, snoop is wrong again. Okay, I'm gonna twist this bone in a weird direction. I'll fuck with him. <laughs> All right, no more, no more Star Wars. We're not going to get into it. Uh, we're going to jump down because there's a bunch of topics that we're going to skip. We're going to hold off for next week because they're good. They require a lot of time. We got one from the Slat. I don't really know if we can come out with Slats. We'll, we'll, we'll try and get to that one last. Uh, all right, tell you what. We'll we'll handle the one from Sergeant Danger Cow because this one's good. I know we How all... How many more are we doing? Because it's been an hour. I mean, I don't want to say that I... I... We're going to hit this one, and then depending on how long it takes... We may have time for one more, but I want to be able to leave time to throw uh, throw some time into topics from the chat tonight. So we'll get into this one. We'll see what we're at for time. We'll take it from there. Uh, all right. So this one's from Sergeant Danger Cow. And this one actually came up from something I wrote on Twitter the other day from uh, an experience I had on Battlefield 4 over the weekend regarding one guy from SimThick. And for the record... I have nothing against Synthic. I've been on great terms with them. I even helped them fucking organize a massive tournament between a shit ton of YouTubers and the Synthic team themselves for a Battlefield 4 tournament. FYI, if you missed it, we got our asses kicked. We were <laughs> fucking garbage. With that said, Sergeant Danger Cow, at what point must a team accept responsibility for being spawn raped? I.e., are the spawn rape team only in that position because of the individualism in the team? And is that a reflection on the increase of stat-obsessed players that EA seeks to attract to BF4, or solely a reflection of map design? Scanner, take it. If you're on a team that's spawn-trapped, 90% of... Like, you can be the 10% of people who, who may legitimately think that being spawn-trapped is not your fault. And you might be the kind of player who's genuine in in that thought you know you're you're trying to get out and you're good you know good routes getting your couple of kills but just like overwhelming numbers being very difficult to deal with 
and then 90 percent of your team they actually deserve to be there just because they're shit like that's just the way it is they don't try once it starts they 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 have played the game for like a year and it's it's like on metro like metro is a perfect example you can spot the morons on metro because they stop on conquest at the first flag like they're the dumbasses if one person is burning it why the fuck are you standing beside him with your thumb up your ass you should be running a b b is the money take b go to tickets hold win that's it like it's I don't know. It's it's complicated. Like you can't just say it's not the player's fault because a lot of the time it is the player's fault, and you can't say it's definitely not map design because sometimes it is because some maps lend themselves exactly. pretty well to spawn trapping. Honestly, Metro isn't one. People just think it is. Uh, Grand Bazaar. Now there's a map that's kind of poorly designed, kind of especially on Rush. It's really easy to like lock people in. Grand Bazaar just... is fucking terrible with those first MComs. Yeah, with the it's, way the it's bad. spawns work. But like Metro actually isn't. Metro is fine. You just people need to appreciate that if you're the only person moving forward, of course it feels difficult because you've got an entire tunnel of people willing to stop you. If you've got an entire tunnel of people moving forward, it's a very different setup. That's where the key part of that question is team. Yeah. And if, if you're a team that's working together and you're all on comms and you're all on the same page and you get spawn raped, yeah, then it's probably your fault, at least to a, a significant degree. If you're in a random public server with a bunch of people that don't coordinate stuff, it would be really difficult for an individual to, to you know, try to take responsibility for that, like in your situation that you were tweeting about. Right. Where you're there by yourself or maybe with two or three other people, right, out of a full team. And it's hard to try to get, even on Metro, um, if you break through to the far flag or something like that, even then it's difficult to get people on your team to switch squads and spawn on you and, and do that kind of stuff. Because people just get, they just get narrow-minded and like hung up in what they're doing. They're just like, this is my corner and I'm shooting 500 rounds that way. Right. Yeah. And, that guy with the LMG killed me three times. I'm going to kill him. Right. You know, they lose their focus. Only once in the history of of Battlefield have I managed to take a team on Metro where I spawn in and we're already spawn trapped and I got that team to move forward onto C I got them to move up to B I, I got them into the positions they needed to be in, I got them holding B and we brought it back and we won it and that was an entire team of new players <laughs> but that was like the perfect fucking storm basically of people right. who were willing to listen to me and, and, and wanted to win and also my tone like my first thing to do when I see somebody being a fucking idiot is call them an idiot but for whatever reason that day I just seemed to approach it I checked people's ranks before I hit the chat basically and I mm -hmm. saw right they're all new bitching at somebody who's new over stuff that they're never gonna know isn't going to help. You're just going to make him kind of mad. It's like, oh, who's this dick that thinks he's great? Whereas, like, being in chat and, like, guys, you know, can somebody just uh, come over to this portion and help me and we'll push and then other people push here? People are more receptive. Yeah, it's a and, that, thing. <clears throat> and that, you know, it is a bit of a luck of a draw when you go into public service, but it is possible to do that on Metro. I've been in rounds where Katie and I would jump in halfway through with a couple of her clan buddies and there'd be maybe three or four of us and we'd still manage to turn the game around because if you do have that, not just a perfect storm, but even if you have a few people that are reasonable and that will listen and coordinate a bit, it can make a big yeah. difference. But just as often as that happened, probably more often, you end up in a server where that just doesn't happen. And, and honestly, at that point, it's not stay there for the next two hours and rage. It's go find a different server. Yep. Do something else. Exactly. You get a lot of churn on those. Uh, sorry, churn. That's like a business term. You you get a lot of like people dropping out on the spawn trap team, and the, the teams that's actually doing the spawn trapping will just sit there and, and, and work that KD pretty fucking hard. <laughs> that's what I find. Yep. It, kind of going back to the overall theme of it, almost what you kind of said, Skinner. Um, in so many words, there is no cut and dry answer to this topic there's a bit 
there's a lot to consider from both sides of the argument. It's not just players. It's not just map design. It's a lot of everything. And it's all on a, like a uh, per-situation basis. To the point, though, I will say about... We brought up Grand Bazaar and Rush, specifically. Those first MCOMs. That's a tough one to say, because while the map design isn't great, by now... I mean, even a year, not even a year, six months after the release of Battlefield 3, people should have known better. If you push A and take A first, you can win that game. Every, almost every fucking time. On an evenly matched team, the attackers should be able to win the majority of the times if you take A first in the first set of MCOMs because of where location is. And that's where I think it's almost like a 55-45 split between, you know, 55% of it, just the slight majority... When it comes to spawn rate, it's on the players. You just need to be smart. Every map has its Achilles heel. Maybe not everyone. There's some that are designed pretty well, and then there are others that aren't designed very well at all. And those that aren't designed very well have their own Achilles heel. For uh, Grand Bazaar, specifically with Rush, the Achilles heel was A on the first set of MCOMs. If you took that out first, or if you made that your priority... Oh, we lost Scanner. <laughs> if you made that your priority, like that, that makes or breaks that whole fucking game. And a lot can be said about that for other things. But if you don't realize that, or you don't make that your priority, that's where it comes into it being on the team, on the players. And, uh... It, that, that, again, that's, again, that's where it comes up where it's not that cut and dry. So, to reiterate, I'm not disagreeing with anyone. I'm agreeing with everyone and expanding on that point, just in kind of a different way of saying it the less coherent way of saying it because that's the way I do things apparently <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true though I mean some of that it, it all adds to it and sometimes you just have that situation where you know it, it, the straw that breaks the camel's back may just be the map design or you know a couple of people that aren't interested in because you know the thing is some people might be in there going after certain assignments, so they're doing stuff that doesn't help the team. Like that kind of shit happens all over the place. And right. And I think actually this is part of why BF4 struggled so much during the first, its first year, is because in order to have some really good rounds, you do usually want to play with friends. And when there were so many issues with it, you had a lot of your friends that just weren't playing it, whether their computer had issues with it, or they weren't interested, or they just gave up on it, or whatever. Suddenly, you found yourself a lot more by yourself. And that just makes everything even more difficult. Yep. Plus BF4, once you had an SSD, you were in. Yeah. Thankfully, they fucking <sighs> added that ready up feature. That I think it started with Hardline, didn't it? The Hardline beta came out. They had the ready up for that. And then they're like, hey, we should probably put that in the CTE and see how well. It... Not that they even needed to put it in the CTE, but it made its way to the CTE and then to the final build. I don't know why. They should have had that from the very beginning, but uh, what do I know? I'm not a fucking game designer. I remember sitting there in the hardline beta in my truck, waiting for that little countdown to finish so I could go and murder everyone on the fucking server. Dude, like, I don't fucking care what you or Squantoon say. If they bring that truck back untouched from the way it was in the beta, I don't see how you two guys don't play the fuck out of that game and just embarrass everyone. I just want everyone to know, when we played the Hardline beta, I think, and I, I shit you not, I do not fucking exaggerate when I, when I say this. Scanner and Squantoon combined had like a 30 to 35 to 1 KDR when they were in that truck. It was absurd. Game in and game out, they were getting 20 plus kills, and maybe one of them died. Each game. The, the other team insane. Had, the other team had a truck. What was that? Like that's... The that's the balance. Like, you can't just say, like, it's the truck because the other team had a truck. Right. It was the way we utilized the truck. Like, we would... People drove the same routes on the maps the whole time. We would spawn in, get in the truck, wait for the counter, drive out, sit under this underpass, wait for them to drive past over it, go up the ramp and kill their truck. Like, people were stupid. Like, the trucks weren't unbalanced. And if I was on foot, I'd win against the truck. Because other truck drivers didn't know how to drive the truck. Yep. Like, 
I enjoyed the truck. It was it was a lot of fun. I actually I kind of I would love to see like custom camos for the truck. That'd be awesome. <laughs> like pink zebra truck fucking rolling over your face. That'd be legit. <laughs> Dude, that truck in the heart and in the uh, beta was kind of similar to the little no not the liver the uh, attack <laughs> chopper in Battlefield Three's like heyday in the early days of it. Um, it wasn't over it wasn't overpowered by any means. It's just that you couldn't take it down with. You couldn't people kill it with, basically the problem with the truck that people were having is you couldn't kill it with one rpg and if they were lucky out of the five they fired they might land one rpg right like that was that was people's issues like people would never set up like traps of c4 or anything to stop us and we would be ferrying like one game i have it on my channel we all we did was we were in the truck and we ferried uh, Evil Viking up and down. Like, we killed everything between, like, points A and points B. And we just ferried Dave up and down the map. He'd grab the money. Like, jump out, let him in, drive back with the money. One of us would have the money, jump back, like, jump in, drive down. Like, people just didn't know what they were doing because it was a beta. Like, everybody overreacted to the truck as if it was some kind of fucking OP thing. But it wasn't. Because all it ever took was like two people firing RPGs at it. The truck was fucking dead. Easy. The other team didn't have a scanner. They're just silly. Me and Squantoon in combination, we're, we're pretty good in, in most... Uh, we think similarly and we, we want to do the same stuff. Me and Squantoon. It's like we, we want to run this route. We want to kill these guys who are going to be a problem. We want to take this flag or this fucking MCOM. Or... It's good. It's yeah. nice. It's like, it's like a, it's like a, having a twin that's stuck to me, but also violent like me. <laughs> it's great. Uh, what are those guys called? Siamese twins? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we will uh, move on to the end of the podcast. It's been about. I like to try and keep it to an hour and a half. I feel like the hour and a half for a podcast. It, it's fucking squad tunes right there in the chat. Name dropper. <laughs> um, I like to keep it to about an hour and a half. I think that's kind of the sweet point for a big podcast such as this so this is the point where we start asking people to f throw us topics from the chat go ahead and start throwing things at us and we react from there obviously we're about 30 seconds well you guys are 30 seconds behind from what we're talking about so it's going to take a couple seconds there'll be a little a little dead air here oh my back still hurts but uh we'll get something good and then we'll call it quits for the night uh, the scanner space hasn't loaded for me so it's just the blue outline Interesting. looks like he's a robot well, at least it's still there for me, which is the important part. Um, in the meantime, I'll wait for some topics to show up. Preferably not anything Battlefield-related, because we have talked about Battlefield quite a bit tonight. So if we can do something different, that'd be good. Uh, for those, again, anyone that's here that's new to the podcast, we pick all of our topics from the forums on our website, dawnbreakergaming.com. You can see it on the stream down the bottom right corner. Uh, you can go into the forums, and then there's a podcast sub forum, and in there, uh, I believe Opona is probably going to throw the link up there right now, because she's really good about that. But there will be an episode 6 thread in the podcast sub forum. In there, you guys can go ahead. Any topic that is gaming-related in any way, shape, or form is valid. We will try and touch upon it in each successive week. I think what we're going to do is, with this being... Actually, you know what? No. Next week, we will still continue to take topics from the community. But I think week seven, maybe week eight, we're going to go strictly a, a host topic night because there's some topics that we've been sitting on since week one. Like, I know myself, I've had something that I've been sitting on since week one. So I want to be able to get to that. Uh, all right, so... JFO wants to know if I saw the Zelda Wii U footage and what I thought. Ooh. And I did see it, and I think it's awesome. I mean, I like the open world concept, and I'd like to see what they're going to do with it, because I feel like with Wind Waker and, uh, I feel like Wind Waker? I mean, Skyward Sword wasn't really, uh, I feel like they've been going in that direction, but it really hasn't been fully open world, and, uh, the whole map on the Wii U control pad makes it so much easier, because I feel like you're always looking at the map in Zelda, so that'll be nice for the immersion um but yeah it looked really nice it looked good like graphically it looked kind of like a combination between um 
Wind Waker and Skyward Sword in terms of well, Wind Waker, Skyward Sword, and Twilight Princess in terms of the style. Um, but yes, I am very excited. I'm very excited about that. Shit, I missed it. I forgot who said it, but they said should we drop uh, the titles uh, or the the PS3? No, no, no. Something about uh, AAA Triple and, and indie. I think we should keep them. It's good. Just, it, it, it's the context is important when discussing a game. You know, when you talk about a game that flops, like in the sense of AC Unity, like if it was an indie game, low budget, you you might not think about it too much. But when you realize it's a triple A game from a huge developer, backed by a huge publisher, backed by a fucking massive budget, that kind of context is important when you're discussing the overall quality of a game. So I'm all in favor of keeping those titles in play. Roscoe, yes, we're skipping your question because there was a shit ton to discuss it. We're gonna oh, scanner, you're already I'm sorry. I'm yeah, alright, alright, uh, Slats is asking what do we make of Dean Hall leaving Bohemia. It's a good thing. No offense to Dean Hall, the guy can make a fun mob, but he can't make a game. <clears throat> and also there's... keeping someone around is never the option. Like Yeah, there's there's nobody in the to, world right? who doesn't know what Daisy is about. Like what the core values of Daisy is. He w like what does he like? I'm not talking shit about the guy, but what does he actually offer to a project that size that he has no experience of doing, other than kind of be in the way, poisoning the well, with his nostalgia? Um, no, um, but like he just doesn't have the experience. So you get him out, and you get his kind of influence, and people kind of looking at Dean as if like, oh, Dean, he he started Daisy. I'm gonna run everything by him, and I'm gonna make sure Dean's happy with everything. You bring in a guy from you know the other part of, of of bohemia who probably has a lot of experience wrapping up big projects in the form of arma one two and three and you know take on mars and shit did you and know who you, it is you let him finish you just sit him down you go right this project needs to wrap it needs to be a quality game that's sticking to its inherent values wrap it up and he's like cool that's what i do that's what you pay me for here it is it's a good thing it's People not. are just pissed because it's the loyalty thing. It's like, Dean left us. The game isn't finished. Dean made a fucking mod. If you want to see what Dean can do, go play the mod. If you want to finish game, buy the standalone. Let the fucking people who are able to finish it, finish it. it it's weird Drop. because it's not new news that he was that he left. The fact no, that he, he left... Said that was, months ago, like almost a year yeah, ago. A year ago, and it was actually even longer than a year ago now uh eh, no yeah, okay, it's about a year ago when i heard that it was a he did an interview sometime around when the standalone actually launched saying that when the game got to a point where his input wasn't needed anymore and he didn't need to be like kind of be there to help guide the overall direction of the game he was out because where they're developing the game was really fucking far away from where his family was and he knew that it was going to get to a point where he didn't need to be there every day in office to make sure that the day-to-day -day operations were going as planned, that the direction of the game was staying on track. So he always had his exit plan. He wanted to get back to his family. Totally respect that. I, I have absolutely no problems with it. And I it, that kind of plays into what Scanner said. The guy did a really great mod, but he didn't really have that huge of a position within Bohemia as far as actually making the game. He kind of came in at first and said, okay, well, this is what I did with the mod, and uh, let's make a game out of it. And he helped kind of create the overall, the grand picture of what the game should be, based on what he had created from the mod. He kind of, if I remember correctly, he was like the project lead and then got delegated to a lesser position where he's kind of the social media aspect of it. And even then, he wasn't that good, and I totally understand where he comes from in this because I have the same problem way too often where he took the negativity or the negative feedback way too personal. Uh, so even as a PR guy, he wasn't that great because you don't want someone that wears their emotions on their sleeve to be your PR guy. You want to be able to, you want to have someone that kind of blocks out all that really overly negative stuff because it, most of the time it's not the majority of the community speaking about the game. Sometimes, yeah, but in Daisy's case, I don't think so. I think a lot of that negative feedback, it was the minority speaking louder than the majority. Uh, so, with... It, it, it's it's going to be fine with him leaving. The overall goal, end goal of Daisy and the overall image of it, uh, 
the overall vision, that's what I'm looking for, of it is still going to be realized to what he had in mind. I think we're still going to get the what we were promised. We'll eventually get the full release of the game. Everything will be happy. It's not a big deal. People were blowing up about it on people, the Daisy subreddit. People put way too much, give way too much credit to a single person. Yep. It's it's not like he was doing all this by himself. It's a big team. The only thing that has me slightly worried is that the person in charge now is one of the guys that came over that used to do the um, the big hunter, the hunting games. Yeah, Cabela's big, so, big game hunter. Yeah, yeah. But, again, it's such a big team, like the amount of people working on something like that. And from a creative point of view, that I mean, the vision's there, right? Right. It's not like this is like an ongoing thing that constantly needed to be reiterated. Like everybody that's working on it knows what this game is supposed to be. Exactly. It's going to take time to make it. It's not like Cabela's big game hunter guy is going to come in and be like, oh, well, yeah. I know we're halfway these... through the alpha, but let's go in this direction. Because, no, it, I mean, the, the path has been laid and they're already following it from this point. Now it's just a matter of how well can they execute over the next couple months to continue to deliver a better functioning game. Uh, I mean, topics kind of dried up. I may have missed some. Now it's fucking emotes and salt. <laughs> I, OP concern doggy. I don't know what half them are. Me Whenever either. I see that one particular face, I always just say drunk Michael Sarah because that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, pretty sweet. That's how I met Umi. We were in the same stream. Um, I can't remember what stream I was watching. I think it was a uh, Jess, maybe streaming before I knew anybody. And I, Umi made that face, and I just said "Drunk Michael Sarah," and he was like, "No, it's this." And I'm like, "I don't care. It's fucking Drunk Michael Sarah. <laughs> Who the fuck are you?" And then we got on well. All right, before we all right, last topic, quick hits. John Dan's got a good one. Uh, one unmissable PS3 game you wish came out for PS or for PC. That's actually a really, really good one. That's, That's so good. easy. And anybody who answers this the wrong way, you're dead <sighs> to me. Here we go. I'm no longer going first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Skinner has to go first. <laughs> nope. I don't. Snoove has to go first because he's not going to say it, and then I can hate him. Which, to be fair, I haven't played that many PS3 games. So I'm sure whatever it is you, you've come up with for the acceptable answer, I haven't even fucking thought of. Never mind. Played. Let me, what do I have left? Uh, wait, did that come out of PS3? That's actually a good answer. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll I'll go first then because because I'm okay with Scan hating me. When it comes right. to that. You're used to it. For yeah, for for me, the only reason I bought a PS3 originally was Uncharted. That's a good fucking answer. I bought a PS3 for Infamous and a PS4 for Infamous. See, I don't have a leg I don't have a good answer for this because everything that I played on PS3, the limited games I did play, was available on PC. I guess the only thing I could say would be Metal Gear Solid because that game was so fucking good that to be able to see that on PC, which thank God, and Metal Gear Solid Five is coming on PC, but to be able to see the potential of it on PC, that'd be nice. All right, Scanner, let's let's hear what the the, the right answer is. <laughs> this isn't even a selfish answer as much as i adore the game it's not me being selfish it's merely wanting my humble pc master race brethren to experience one of the greatest games ever made red dead redemption oh. if, if i had played that i would agree with you i have heard too many fucking good things about this game to do it's such I need a good to game. play it the mm -hmm. end of that game actually broke my fucking heart which very few games have done but, like, it's so well done in, in every way. Like, it's just, it's a beautiful game. It's so well designed. It's so immersive and interesting. And it would just, it would be one of those games that I would love to, like, people who have never had consoles, they're only PC people, I would love for them to experience just the level of games that exist on consoles. It's like, look, this was only ever on a console, and this is frankly fucking amazing. That that'd be sweet, you but just, that's my answer. That's an excellent answer. I uh, I did something oh, that thankfully learned. Oh, Scanner would... was right yet again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did something that fake food would be really pissed about whenever he gets to hear about this. But uh, 
I sold my PS3, so I knew there's absolutely no chance I was going to be able to go back and play Red Dead Redemption or, or a lot of games. So I went on YouTube and I looked up the ending to the game. I already kind of got the gist of what the gameplay was from seeing other people's videos. So I went on YouTube, watched the ending, and you're right, Scanner. That was an emotionally moving ending. That was a fucking... Yep. Like, I wish I could have played the game to experience everything right up to and through the end. I I put it up there on the shelf with um, Bioshock Infinite for the overall quality of the end of the game. Where it was kind of like mind-blowing, but in a different sense of mind-blowing. Like, Bioshock Infinite was fucking mind-blowing. Whereas the ending to Red Dead Redemption was just like mind-blowing, but in like a oh my god kind of way. Not like a my mind's fucked, just like a blown. Does that make any sense? Yes. Sure. Thank Why you. not? So I, need I, I have an excuse. I, I didn't consider that game because I played it on the 360. It's good. It's not a PS3 exclusive. That makes sense. It is Rockstar. Okay. I'll buy that. There have been rumors, but I won't stoke the fires with the rumors because rumors, rumors with a room, you know? Right. If that game came to PC, I would pay, even though, I mean, how old is it now? When did it come out? 2011 or 2012? Dude, I'd cut a nut to get that game on PC. I'd there's pay no pr- there's no price tag they can put on it that would stop me from buying it. I would pay full price to be able to play it on PC. But all right, that is uh, that's a good point to jump off. We've been we've covered a lot tonight, and next week we have even more to cover because we've left a lot of topics from this week on the table, and the way things have been going, we'll probably have just as many topics to cover next week as well. So hopefully we can go a little more quick fire with them next week. But it is what it is. We don't force anything. We just kind of let the conversations go as they are. If we get to everything cool, if not, it's not a big deal. So thank you guys for watching. Chalk, thank you again for being a guest on this. We appreciate it, man. Thank you for filling in for Tony. Tony, if you're watching, you're a fucking chump for doing schoolwork. But I respect you for it. I just like giving you shit. Everyone in the chat, thank you for being here. For Thank you for watching. Anyone that is watching that also has Twitter and retweeted the stream, Cannot thank you enough. I know I say that a lot, and I, I get the, in my paranoid state, I get the impression that people don't think I'm genuine when I say that I appreciate the support that you guys show us when you retweet the stream or just share it, any of those things. I le- I am legitimately 100% serious when I say I appreciate that. Like, we are nothing without you guys, the community. Without you, we're just fucking four random people talking online to fucking no one. You guys make this what it is. That's what it is. And it's not even the fact that you're here. You're there creating the, the topics for this. And that's awesome. That's what I've, I've always been about with Shoesie Bang. And, and everyone in this group, we've always been really involved with the community. And you guys are just helping to continue that. And that's awesome. I like that it, it's not just us talking out of our ass. You guys are a part of it. And I appreciate that more than words can describe. And I also appreciate the fact that you're helping sharing everything and helping to try and make this thing grow. With that said... In the forums of Dawnbreaker Gaming, I brought up it before, I'll bring it up again. Jess, if you could please link the... I just posted it. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Episode 6 topics, go ahead, drop any topic that is gaming related. We will cover it if we can. There's a lot of things, like I said, that we, we try to get to, but we can't. Time constriction, I like to try and keep it to an hour and a half as close as possible. It seems to be the sweet spot people can tolerate. Uh, go ahead and if you haven't registered for the website, go ahead and do so. It's really easy. It'll take you two seconds. And then you'll be able to post in the forums. Again, anything game-related, and we're good. Uh, and I think we're going to do for pretty soon, just to kind of change the overall tone of the podcast, is we're going to do something that is in strictly gaming-related. We'll open up the topics a little bit so it can be something just a little different. Change the overall pace and theme of things for shits and giggles. But that's going to be it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I I have fun with this every week. I hope you guys did too. Again, Chalk, thank you again for filling in for Tony. Appreciate it. Everyone, have a good night. We will see you next week. And hopefully, barring anything with my wife's crazy-ass work schedule, we'll be back on Monday, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 1 a.m. GMT. Have a good night, everyone. We appreciate it. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.